All right, hello again. I'm here with Jonas and Sophie, and Jonas is going to tell us a little bit about his project. Do you want to start by introducing yourself? I'm Jonas Hansen. Um, I'm a freshman in Matthew's uh, house, um, and undecided for concentration, but maybe I want to do a special concentration in maybe robotics or something of the like. Um, yeah. All right, and then can you tell us a bit about, about your project? All right, so for my project, um, I basically made an iOS app um, that you can, so if we, it's called RoboDraw, and you can, the user can open it and they can select from a list of images, uh, and then they can send that image to this robot, which I built, um, which will autonomously draw that image on the whiteboard. Um, so if we try our mystery image here, we can let that run while it's going here. So we just hit send to robot. And Ooh. it's starting to go. Um, and basically what it's doing is um, the, in the app there is a, a list and on the robot there is a, the, the preloaded images, they're already loaded onto the, um, the, to the robot through an SD card. And so you're, when you send, when you hit send to robot, um, all you're doing, like if I want to send this, when I hit send to robot, all you're doing is you're sending the index of that item in the list, so for one, two, three, for snowman it would be three, yep. you send that to the robot and it'll print the third file it has on its SD card. This just goes to show that the rate indexing you learn in like week one always stays relevant. <laughs> true, true, true. Can you tell us a little bit about what made you want to get started on this project? Um, so I've never been much of a pure CS guy. Um, I usually like to have some kind of implementation. Um, in the past, that's usually been robots, um, and I liked the idea of implementing robots and code and art. Mm. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, you know, like a, for the future, this could be like like a public it, out in the public. Like kids can come up and they can draw images and have a, see a robot like draw it on a big, big, giant whiteboard. Um, that was my main inspiration, um, and also just because it's fun. A lot of work, but. Um, and fun. you know, what you're saying isn't too um, impossible. In the Cabot Science Library, they set up these public 3D printers. So I'm sure if you talk to the managers, the CS department, you could definitely get an installation going up with this. Um, I imagine it would bring a lot of joy to students' lives. And For then, sure, yeah. did you have hardware experience before this class, or like, did you just learn it during the course of the project? Hardware, you said? Hardware, yeah. Yeah, um, I, had, I did have some. I did robotics in high school. Oh, um, okay. I did some just hobby projects at home, okay. similar to this kind of stuff. Um, and the, so the base here is 3D printed. I used the 3D printers in Maxwell Dorkin. Yeah, um, oh, cool. and then the electronics I also borrowed from Maxwell Dorkin in the <laughs> lab. Um, and yeah. Um, what, were there any particularly challenging parts? I mean, it seems very complicated in general, yeah. but anything in particular? So. Obviously, the robot code was a pain um, because there's a lot of math involved. Really? Um, all the robot actually needs is the distance between these two anchor points. Um, and from there, it's able to create an XY coordinate plane across the whiteboard based on that distance. Um, and the coding for it was you know, very math heavy. Um, but there, there are some, there's stuff out there. People have done similar things with these motors, which are stepper motors, which are just fancy motors that can take in uh, vectors to, to, to move the robot accordingly. Um, and surprisingly, the app was a little challenging because connecting to Bluetooth in Swift really? is, is weird. So they, I forgot to mention that. They connect through Bluetooth. Um, and originally, I had an app where the user could um, draw the image themselves mm -hmm. um, like this, and then they would send that to the robot, except that was way too much data to send. It, this is not very powerful. It can only send like, it can only receive like 20 bytes of data, mm -hmm. where, which just has like 2,000, 3,000 bytes, wow. which is really crappy on the robot's part, but um, it's what I was working with. Um, so I ended up just creating that list view, but I had to do that kind of last minute, mm -hmm. um, but I was able to do it. Um, and here, the plot finished. Mm -hmm. It says, this is CS50. That was the mystery image. <laughs> <laughs> I think that um, says it all. On that note, we'll end it. <laughs> Thanks for yeah. joining. All right, thank you.